Good morning and welcome to Coffee with Compassion. My name is Pastor Hal. Thank you for joining me this morning. And uh, if today's devotional is a blessing to you, I would ask you to share it with someone. Uh, we're talking about alignment in relationships. And there are many in the body of Christ that have broken relationships all around them that need to be reconciled. Remember we said yesterday we've been given the ministry of reconciliation. Uh, reconciling these relationships are essential because we do not want broken relationships to lead to unforgiveness and bitterness in our life. It will eat away at you like a cancer. And yesterday we said that reconciliation does two things. It, it resolves problems and it protects the relationship. Now, Jesus deals with this problem. And today we're going to look at the problem. And tomorrow we are going to look at the solution. In Matthew 5, 21 through 22, the scripture says this, Jesus speaking, You have heard that our ancestors were told you must not murder. If you commit murder, you are subject to judgment. But I say to you, if you are even angry with someone, you are subject to judgment. If you call someone an idiot or raka, you are in danger being brought before the court. And if you curse, thou fool, to someone, you are in danger of the fires of hell. Now, that's pretty strong words. Uh, and this passage is found in the Sermon of the Mount. Now, there is a crowd of Jews there. There are Pharisees, Sadducees, and Essenes. And uh, they were the church leaders of Jesus' day. And then there were other people. The crowd was there as well. So Jesus is challenging the way they think. Their thinking was misaligned, especially when it came to relationships. Now, uh, many times, you know, we are alarmed at certain atrocities that take place in the world. And we, when we hear these things, we think that is demonic, that is evil, that is dark, okay? But Jesus is addressing a crowd who have some of the same things in their heart. They may not have committed the crime, but yet it's in their heart. So that's the first point we need to see in the problem. God looks at our heart, not so much the action at times. In this passage, he's showing what lurks in the heart of people. And to these leaders, uh, he said, your ancestors said you must not commit murder. If you do, you are subject to the courts. The penalty of the court would have been death, all right? And I'm sure that everybody there breathed a sigh of relief thinking, hey, man, I've never committed murder. So I'm in pretty good shape. I'm self-righteous here. But then Jesus, you know, said something. Uh, he said that that... I'm going to say this to you, all right? He's saying, let me tell you uh, what God's truth is on this matter. You may have never taken a person's life literally, but in your heart you have unforgiveness, bitterness, and anger. And it's unforgiveness, bitterness, and anger that lead people to the actions of murder. So Jesus is saying, if you have these attitudes in your heart, concerning someone that in his eyes we have committed the act okay he's communicating the spirit of the law now number two god sees anger as being rooted in unforgiveness and uh and and this is really a problem in the church people hold on to grudges he said this if you're even angry with someone you're subject to judgment uh, that word anger in the Greek is orgizo, which means to be angry. It's a state of being angry. Have you ever been around an angry person? They're angry all the time. Why are they angry? Because they've refused to forgive. They brood. They smolder. Uh, they're full of bitterness. They hold grudges. And it eats away, like I said, like cancer. Uh, so we see the importance for our own souls to be able, we have to be able to forgive and reconcile relationships because it will cause you to be angry. Uh, there's only one antidote to anger, and we see it, is forgiveness. Paul wrote in Colossians 3 and 13, make allowance for each other's faults and forgive anyone who offends you. Remember the Lord forgave you, so you must forgive 
others. It's the love of God that compels us to forgive others despite the fault and despite the offense. The third point and the last, God knows that anger inside escalates into actions. It will, it will cause you to do something that you do not want to do. Uh, it fuels bitterness uh, and it leads to the action of sin. And Jesus cites two actions in this passage of Scripture, a slander and malicious animosity. He said, if you call someone an idiot, that word is reka. It is a slanderous remark. It shows contempt of a person's total character. Uh, and then thou fool was another term. Uh, he said, if you curse someone, that, that sort of implies this, that the person that you are cursing, you're saying that person is godless. Uh, and that the image of God is not in them. You're reducing someone to just a waste of life and breath. Every person is created in the image of God. That is malicious animosity. It's spiritual murder. And God sees what's in our heart. Tomorrow we're going to look at the solution. Let us pray. Father, God, any of these, rec these uh, relationships that have not been reconciled, God, dear Holy Spirit, just begin to examine our hearts. God, that we can make that first move, that attempt uh, to reconcile, Lord, and to forgive. Lord, because there's freedom in it. We thank you for that. It's in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you and have a wonderful day.